Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to start to discuss graphing parabolas. So our notes are graph parabolas in standard form. And today's date is the 16th. Okay, graphing parabolas in standard form. So when we talk about parabolas, we are talking about a um, quadratic function. So first thing we're going to review is the quadratic function in standard form, which would be ax squared plus bx plus c. So this right here is our standard form. Along with a quadratic function in standard form, one of the things we have to keep in mind is that a is greater than zero. Okay, this is like really, really important. So when we were talking about factoring during our last unit, one of the things we discussed was we wanted a to be one, right? And we wanted a to be one or larger than one. That's the same as this. Right, if A is one, it's bigger than zero, right? So same idea. We just can't have A be zero here. Um, so this should be review like, um, remember when we are looking at quadratics and standard form, we're looking for something that has a power of two. So um, an equation, a function where the largest power is two, something's being squared. So when we are graphing, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be looking for these five specific points. So we must graph five specific, I just wrote like multiple dots on my eye, um, points, five specific points. These are the five specific points that we have to graph when graphing these parabolas. So I have my x-intercepts. I have my axis of symmetry. Now that's a lot, that's like a mouthful. So we're gonna refer to this um, as A of S like just a little abbreviation there, right? So we can um, not have to write all those big words. The vertex, okay, and always must, always must be labeled. So we always label our vertex um, on our graph. Uh, we are going to need the y intercept and then we need the y intercept reflected. Reflected. Okay, those are the five things that we are going to graph every single time we graph a parabola. Then um, one other key takeaway is that we must always, so always label points that are not whole numbers. Okay, so if our points are not whole numbers, we need to make sure to label those points um, just so we can identify that. So these are kind of like the key ground rules to graphing parabolas. Um, so it doesn't matter like what, if I'm in standard form, intercept form, like whatever form I'm in, these are the way, like the five things you have to graph, okay? Today we are going to concentrate though on graphing from standard form. So when I have standard form, what is my graph gonna look like and how do I find all of these items? 
So we're going to start with example one. Here we go. So example one. I have f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 5. Now, we're going to use this same function throughout um, this problem. So we're going to find the five items for this function here. So the first thing we are looking for are our x-intercepts. Now, if you think back to graphing intercepts in standard form um, in probably course three, we always looked at if I needed to solve for an x-intercept, I needed my y value to be zero, right? When y is zero and x is a number, that is where my line is crossing the graph. So the easiest way to do this and what we're most familiar with is solving for our roots. Our roots and using the zero product property are the same things as solving for the x-intercepts. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna look at factoring it. So the factors of one have to be one times one, right? That's prime, there's no way around it. Five is also prime, so five times one. So this has to be five times one plus one times one. So when I go about factoring this, this becomes X plus five times X plus one. And I'm gonna set that equal to zero because I'm using the zero product property to solve for my roots, which are also known as my X intercepts. Now, one of the things I noticed on this last test that a lot of people had gotten dinged points on is that we did not show the ZPP to the full extent. So what I mean by that is that I need to set each one of these equal to zero. And some of you didn't do that on the last test. So I need to have X plus five equals zero and I need to have X plus one equals zero. Minus five, minus five. So X is equal to negative five, minus one, minus one. X equals negative one. Okay, that piece of work there is really important. Now, also I wanna remind you that when we're talking about intercepts, an intercept is a point on the graph, therefore it must be represented as an ordered pair. So I have negative five comma zero and negative one comma zero. These are my X intercepts. Everyone okay with that? Great. So now we're going to, I gotta turn my page. Now we are going to look at the axis of symmetry. Okay, so when we are solving for the axis of symmetry, we are looking at um, using this formula, which is x equals negative b over 2a. This is when in standard form. Okay, we're only using that if we are in standard form. If we are not in standard form, then we are not going to use that. Does everyone understand that? Okay. Um, so that's something to just keep in mind. Also, this is not given, meaning you need to memorize this, just to be very clear about that. So we're going back to that function, f of x is equal to, I don't know why I wrote an a. Well, I know why, but I wasn't supposed to x squared plus 6x plus 5. So when I am in standard form, this is ax, this is um, b, and this is c. So the coefficients on the x's are a and b, and then my constant is c. So that's just important to remember because especially when we're looking for b and a, I need to make sure I'm pulling out the correct numbers. 
So here I have x equals negative b over 2a. So I have x equals negative b, which is 6, over 2 times a, which the coefficient here is 1. This becomes x equals negative 6 over 2. So x equals negative 3. This is my a of s, okay, axis of symmetry. Now, the axis of symmetry is not officially something on the graph, but it is something that we use on the graph. Um, so if you think back to probably like second grade, what is symmetry, right? Symmetry is when we take that piece of paper or that piece of artwork and we fold it in half and the, and the opposite sides are matchies. Can everyone visualize that? I don't know if you can see the shadow of my hands like I'm folding this. I know you can't see me, but that's what I'm doing. Um, so we use that in order to um, reflect different parts of our parabola because both sides of the parabola should match. So in a minute when we graph, this will make more sense. Okay, then over here, I am now looking at my vertex. So for my vertex, f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. So my vertex is where uh, my parabola, both sides of my parabola meet. Um, and coming from the vertex is where the axis of symmetry comes from. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative 3 and we're going to substitute it back into my function in order to come up with my y value, which then provides me with the vertex. So if I have f of negative 3, that would equal negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 5 f of negative 3 is equal to 9 plus negative 18 plus 5. f of negative 3 is equal to this and this makes what? Negative 9 plus 5. And then f of negative 3 is equal to, that makes negative 4. Remember, this is function notation. So this is really like y, right? So this is really saying like y equals negative four. So when we're looking at our vertex, the point is at negative three, negative four. Negative three, negative four. Okay. So now I need to go ahead and I need to look at my y-intercept, y-intercept. So again, um, going back to course three, when we were graphing linear equations and functions in standard form, in order to have a y-intercept, my x value needed to be zero. So when we're looking at this, again, in standard form, f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. If you just visualize my x value being 0, just visualize it. You don't have to write it out. This would be 0. This would be 0. And then I'm only left with this constant. So this constant here, c, c is the y-intercept. So kind of like when we have y equals mx plus b, right? We know that b is just our y-intercept. Same idea here. C is going to be our y-intercept. So my x value is 0. My y value is 5. This right here is my y-intercept. Pretty easy and straightforward so far. With the axis of symmetry is x minus 3, right? Yes. So the okay. axis of symmetry, we're going to only represent that as an equation to a vertical line. That's why it's not an ordered pair. And that's why it is x equals 3. Okay, we're going to now graph this together. 
One of the things I want to remind everyone is that we only graph on binder paper because it's the paper in our notes. Does that everyone remember that? Do not graph janky graphs. Okay, in real life. So go ahead and get out your straight edge. Um, the reflected Y will happen in a moment. Okay. Um, there's not a formula we're going to use for reflecting Y. So I'm going to show that when we get to graphing. Okay, I'm just going to make mine pretty nice and big and whatnot. So go ahead, draw this out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just some hash marks on here. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just making this really big so we can see it. There's no reason that it has to be teeny tiny. If you really need yours teeny tiny, go ahead. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no reason I picked seven. So I know some of you are like, why is she counting to seven? I don't know. I just chose seven today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just trying to keep even on all sides. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just so they're quick and easy to see, I'm gonna make some notes here so I know what I'm graphing um, when I'm graphing it because I don't wanna to have to keep flipping through like all my pages, right? So this is going to be um, X intercepts, intercepts. We have negative five, zero. We have negative one, zero. A of S, mm, X equals negative three. We have my vertex which is negative three, negative four, and we have a y-intercept, y-intercept of zero comma five. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started graphing. So I'm gonna plot my points. X-intercepts, negative five, zero, starting from the origin, one, two, three, four, five. There's my first x-intercept, Negative one, zero, starting from the origin, negative one. There we go. Okay, I've now just plotted my x-intercepts. Very straightforward. A of s, x equals negative three. So this is a vertical line. However, this is invisible because it's not actually part of my parabola. So wherever your A of s is, you are going to find it. So one, two, three, and I'm going to make an invisible line here. That's why it's dotted. That, that shows it's invisible. <laughs> now this invisible line, we are going to use in order to find the reflection and to also make sure we do some other stuff correctly. So that's why it's important that we have it. Now we're gonna plot the vertex. I wanna remind everyone, your vertex should be on your A of S, right? Like that's the middle point where everything comes to. So I have negative three, negative four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. This here is my vertex. Now I'm going to go ahead and plot my y-intercept, which is 0, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here is where I am crossing. Now, when we are looking at our reflection, we're looking at the point going across the axis of symmetry to the other side. So if you put your pencil on the y-intercept and then we count one, two, three. Putting my pencil here, I'm counting one, two, three. Now I've reflected it. It just, it's like a mirror image on the other side. Everyone good with that? 
okay? It, it genuinely involves counting. Now I have my wonderful looking parabola here and I'm going to connect the dots using a curved line that looks nice to the best of my ability. There is no ruler here. Does everyone understand that? You're not using a straight edge because it's a parabola. So you're gonna just start. Here we go. Remember to please always extend through your points. This one I'm having a little bit harder of a time. There we go. Okay, looking something like this. It should look, I mean, it should be more U-shaped, less V-shaped, but you know, I'm drawing it by hand, it only gets so good. So this right here is our parabola. Now, things that we need to know about our parabola. We might be asked if this is a positive parabola or a negative parabola. So what you, well, what I like to think about is this here is a happy meal because we're happy. And so this is a positive parabola. If this parabola was turned upside down and looked like this, this is a sad meal. This parabola is sad and therefore it is negative. So we have a happy meal, which is a positive parabola, or we have a sad meal, which is a negative parabola. Those are things to think about. When I have a happy meal, which is what we're currently dealing with, a happy parabola, a positive parabola, this point here, my vertex, is going to be my minimum value. So you might get asked, what is the minimum or maximum of this parabola? If my lines are extending up because it's positive, then I'm gonna have a minimum value. If my lines are extending down because it's negative, I would have a maximum value because that would be my highest point. Now, the other things that we are going to be looking at are identifying possibly domain and range. So domain and range. So domain. These are extending. We have no reason to think that they're not. So my domain would be all real numbers. And my range, let me just go back a minute. Remember domain are my X values. So it's all real numbers here. And then my range here is going to be from the minimum up because again, this is a positive parabola happy meal. Okay, so my minimum, so my range here would be y has to be greater than, and we're going up, so this is one, two, three, four. y is greater than four, negative four, equal to, because it's on negative four. So we're going from negative four up for my range. So that is domain and range. We'll cover that more in depth later on. 